it's invited thoroughbreds four and up at wait for age conditions going 2,000 meters a mile and a quarter on the sand course here at Nad Al Sheba. The purse for the richest race in the world, $4 million U.S., paying six places from $2.4 million down to $80,000. Let's meet the field now of 11, a field that has combined to win 81 races, over $15.7 million, and it carries an international rating of 121.5, the highest designation in the history of the sport. On the rail from Japan, the five-year-old lively mount a big price for a horse that has won over $4.2 million. Number two, the first of the Americans, Virginia Craft Hastings, the carrier, George Chavez riding. The three, La Rocha from Dubai's Godolphin Racing Team, the only filly in the field, 10-time English champion jockey Pat Ettery is up. The four, Burt Backrack, sold of the matter, Gary Stevens riding. Five, Godolphin's Howling, who ran last in the Breeders' Cup Classic this past fall. That breaking an eight-race win streak in England, Frankie Dettori, two-time riding champion of England, is in the irons. The sixth, the newest local star, the four-year-old Tommy Ez. The Godolphin uh, won the Dubai Triple Crown on this surface. American Hall of Fame jockey Chris McCarran contracted for the ride on this, his 41st birthday. The seven, Australia's big hope, this is Dane Wynn, a multiple group one winner of over a million dollars. The eighth, America's champion, Cigar, with Jerry Bailey going for his 14th straight victory. The nine, Torrential, the fourth of the local Godolphin stable stars. Ten, Needle Gun, a six-year-old representative of Europe, from the bar to the top English trainer, Clive Britton. And rounding out the field, number 11, Europe's Pen Tire, making his main track debut after winning six of seven races last year in England. The build-up for the world's richest race is over. It's a mile and a quarter for $4 million. And to answer the question, is Cigar the best thoroughbred in the world? Here's the announcer, Graham Good. That's it. Under orders, and they race away, and Dame Wim was fast to stride. That gets the early call. Throw on the inside. Uh, running fast is Lacaria. Spot the white blinkers, and Lacaria takes them on. At this stage, a cigar posted down in about the uh, six or seven slot midfield. Out wide is Needle Gun, and uh, towards the back, Soul of the Matter, and Pentire is racing very wide on the track. They go through the uh, first quarter mile at a breakneck pace, and through on the inside, the white blinkers of Lacaria showing in the lead. Lacaria to the Japanese horse, lively mount the inside. Uh, these are one and two. Pulling hard in third is uh, Dame Wynn. Cigar settled four. That's just wide uh, with Needle Gun behind that. And trying to make ground the inside is Halling as they begin the first turn. But it's Japan making that good uh, advantage of the one draw has the edge. The yellow sleeve. The white blinkers is Le Carrier. The blue sleeves uh, is Tamayez. Then Cigar, the star sleeve jacket on the outside. And look at that horse travel. Pentai sitting wide on the pack. Halling's in behind them. So too uh, Needle Gun. Tamayez is well placed. And they've gone past the halfway stage, and Cigar has come through to shade for the lead with Dame Wynn and Le Carrier, one, two, and three. Sayonara to the Japanese, the yellow sleeves, the inside. White blinkers, it's uh, Le Carrier leading. Here comes Cigar, they're past the halfway stage. Dame Wynn's got the split between the pack. Uh, got it getting them covered, is Pentai making ground the outside. Then comes uh, Halling in virtually an all-white jacket as they come to the top of the home run. And this Cigar, he's going uh, double as they turn for home with three furlongs to go. Le Carrier tries to make a race of it. Cigar, the star sleeve jacket. Yellow slides, here comes Pentire. Uh, Dame Wynn can fight no more. Soul of the Havana has made dry and stride through. But Cigar goes for home at quarter of a mile to go. And Cigar has it. But here comes Soul of the Havana on the outside. And Soul of the Havana comes to press for Cigar. America one and two. Pentire back in third. They've got a third on to go. It's a duel to the line. And Soul of the Havana on the outside of Cigar. And Cigar is digging deep. He's going to have to fight harder. He's coming back. And then Needle Gun and Torrential and La Rocha, who done nothing to it. Uh, Dave Wynn virtually uh, finished last, but it looks as if the Halling is virtually pulled up. And so, the result of the Dubai World Cup, the mighty, the invincible, everything that is superlative in horse racing has been seen here today in the Dubai World Cup with the win, the thrilling win, of number eight, uh, Cigar. Cigar in the colours of Alan Paulson. This one trained by Bill Mott and ridden by Jerry Bailey. By gum, this horse had to dig deep. But he's came here, he's taken on the world, and he has conquered.
second horse home why that's number four soul of the matter oh what a big run by the birth backer at horse trained by richard mandela and ridden by gary stevens third horse home is number two that's the carrier trained in america by james bond 003 today jorge chavez rode that one the carrier that's the one two three close call for four hail a world champion hail cigar well, he's not only the greatest horse in the world, he's one of the gamest too. Because at this stage, it looked as though everything was going absolutely according to plan. Cigar is almost pulling his way to the front. But look on the outside there, and you will find soul of the matter. By golly, Mr. Bacharach will have to write some songs. It looked like Bacharach was going to come and play a tune on Cigar, but it just wasn't to be. Gary Stevens had ranged up to come and win the race in Soul of the Matter. But dig, travel, and then dig this cigar. He really is astonishing. Every superlative is worth it here. He really fought Jerry Bailey, tuck into him, asked him, asked him, asked him, and he responds the whole way. He's still not back up there, but he won't be denied. It isn't just class, it's courage. And Cigar battles his way back to hold off Soul of the Matter, a triumph for, us, for America, and a superb result in the inaugural Dubai World Cup. We've got a world champion. A great result for the Breeders' Cup, too. The Cigar, of course, won it. And the other horse has finished fourth in the last two Breeders' Cup classes. Well, let's hope they built these stands solidly because the roof's going to come off when Cigar comes back in. The Americans have been very cock a -hoot. They've made no fusses about the travel or the foot problem. And they've said their horse is here. And Jerry Bailey said you know, there was a spark in his eye. My God, there's some grit in this horse's heart as well. Because he fought and battled all the way. Sold the map coming in past us. But Cigar, we're waiting to return. The world champion. First Cigar, second Soul of the Matter, third of Carrier. A clean sweep for the States, but really it's about one horse, this very, very tough and extremely classy animal who travels like the rock of God and fights when it matters. Sold the matter, covered himself in glory, came to win it, was just outgunned when it came to it. Cigar, it's his hour. Two senior American jockeys finding out, fighting out marvellous finish. Jerry Bailey and Gary Stevens must have been fighting many finishes over the years. They're both in their 30s and uh, have both ridden well over 3,000 minutes. There have been few final moments for Jerry Bailey in this. It's been an enormous undertaking to come here. They travel with the confidence in their horse, and let's hear them come. Paulson, Sheikh Mohammed, welcome back. The phenomenal cigar written by Gary Bailey. Jerry Bailey. And this horse who travelled so strongly all through the race. He told us before, only Mother Nature. And turning in, it looked as though it would be a case of only Mother Nature. But then all the way up the straight, it was his compatriot, Soul of the Matter, who pushed him so hard. It was a tremendous struggle. But you always got the impression, well, from here you've got the impression anyway that in the closing stages he was just doing enough to hang on.
Jerry Bailey on his way to weigh in. Inducted into the Hall of Fame last year after a brilliant season. Just having a spot of trouble with bits and pieces of track. And he makes his way towards us. Many congratulations, you said, only Mother Nature, but it was nearly so with a matter too. That's true, but he, he had a bad break. His, his rear end slipped out from under him from the, the loose dirt. He regained himself, and I think he overcame it, everything. He didn't handle the surface particularly well, but he's got a tremendous heart. And just in the last half, 100 meters or so, it looked like you were always holding him. Uh, got... I, I don't think he was going to go by me if I went around again. Many congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Edmund. Well, it's a small head, but it's a very, very brave one. And it's interesting that Bailey says he didn't handle the surface particularly well. And the problems at the start as well, well, what can you say? This is a horse who genuinely can capture the imagination and one of those rare animals who can cross continents and countries in his appeal. We've sent our best over to the States against him and best couldn't do it and they couldn't do it yet. There was a moment when Pentar looked to be in the sort of position one wanted to see him. He's only two lengths uh, behind Cigar there but from there on he never gets any closer and you'll see uh, Soul of the Matter is last at the moment or nearly last. I think there probably is something behind him but he makes up a considerable amount of ground. He does. He comes from a mile off the pace. But Cigar, always as he is in his race, is in the box seat. Tamayez was one of the first to crack behind him. Pentar has run a tremendous race for Jeff Rag, rarely over this trip. You absolutely no disgrace at all. But Gary Stevens is stealing there, sort of insinuating himself into the race, trying to get into the firing line. But Cigar, at this stage, you could call no other horse the winner. But Stevens gets a tremendous run out of Soul of the Matter as Pentar begins to fade in the middle. And, but as Jim McGrath said, he always felt that Jerry Bailey's horse was going to be able to do enough. And he stuck his head out, battled, fought, responded to every question. And he's crowned himself the world champion by winning the world's richest race. Well, beforehand, many people thought it was his, almost without turning up, cigars, that is. Come the hour, come the horse, he made it home first. Rejoin us after the break. Mark, run. Run. Soul of the matter. I'm sure you saw the replay as I did. And he made up an amazing amount of ground between the five and three fell on four. So, three American horses top the 1995 international classifications. And Cigar outstandingly the pick of them. Ten wins on the Eight of them grave one events. Quite simply, he came, he saw, and he conquered. And all the more remarkable, an anomaly here in Dubai, that we had the world's richest race without any better. Breathtaking performance by a cigar. Fairly taken my breath away. I'm sure you appreciate it. Privilege to come to that El Sheba to call the Dubai World Cup. prize ceremony about to begin and the action has moved onto the track right in front of these brilliant stands two tiers high and what a victory I think the locals here in Dubai are very proud of their own string and the success it's had and there were some disappointed faces when they came in but Sheikh Mohammed said before the race began and I'm sure he spoke for all true racing fans that he'd love to see Cigar win and that is the beautiful prize that awaits Alan Paulson. 
with whom Sheikh Mohammed teamed up successfully in one sense, maybe not quite successfully as anticipated with Aratsen. So, Cigar has won. Here are the finer details from Simon Hull. Yes, now of the matter, written by Gary Stevenson in third place, number two, Le Carrier. 11 ran, the win tote paid 160. Well, I think the important thing to note from this is that although the locals will be disappointed they didn't get one into the frame, Cigar winning and two American horses second and third will guarantee enormous American interest John in this race from now on and that's going to help build this race up it isn't just money it's got to go to a good horse and it has well Jerry Bailey has been reunited with Cigar to go out for the ceremonies and the presentations and got a tremendous round of applause they do know a good horse when they see one in this neck of the woods. No surprise, a lot of them are here. And just look at the temperament of this horse. He's run a mile and a quarter as fast as he could lay legs to the ground. And almost like that Irish Cheltenham Gold Cup winner. He's really not turning a hair. He's got a pretty bomb-proof temperament. And his temperament really shows in the way he races. He just, he just loves it. He just travels like a horse enjoying every moment of it. And when push comes to shove, he can push harder than any other. Any other. Well, he's triumphant in victory, but if you're analysing it in cold blood, let's just throw one in the water here. Is he actually the best horse we've seen on show tonight? He's certainly a brilliant performer. He's extended his winning run to 14, but the horse who took the consolation race, or so-called consolation race, didn't make the... Dubai World Cup was actually seven hundredths of a second faster, which, uh, as near as damn it, means that uh, he'd have been about two nostrils in front. But that's not allowing for the fact that this horse seems to do just what he needs. Here's the finishing order of the Dubai World Cup. You know the first three, Cigar, Soul of the Matter, and Le Carrier. A good run by the British Raider Pentar in fourth place. Remember, that was his first run for a long time. Tamiyaz finished fifth. An excellent effort by the Japanese Raider, Lively Mount, who was up with the pace all the way. We've heard that Brett Doyle was very pleased with Needle Gun in seventh. Torrential back in eighth. La Rocha never going at all. Pat Edry always rowing away on La Rocha. Dane Wynn weakened out to finish 10th, and last home was Halling. Well, the triumphant jockey, a rather <coughs> extraordinary, I don't think I've ever seen this before, the jockey back on the horse for, for the ceremony. They're jolly lucky to, to have a horse with as phlegmatic a temperament as this. The other morning he stood for about five minutes without moving any of his four legs and I believe he's going to do it now. He really knows how great he is and how to behave. Yeah, and he's not a, he's not a champion who's wrapped in tissue paper. He won 10 for goodness sake last year, John. He works for a living. He's not one of these paper tigers. He's the real thing and he fought like a tiger today. With the point that the previous race was fractionally quicker is one of Jim McGrath's good academic observations to put everything in perspective but we've got the winner that i think many people wanted to see here in the sense that it has made the race made the occasion and the actual heat itself lived up to the billing as you've said it'll learn sheikh mohammed must be delighted none of his horses in the frame but he said last night that he he wasn't worried about that he was simply happy that his dream had come to fruition and now I'm sure he'll feel that his dream has come true. Yeah, I mean, he's a competitor and he likes to win. Um, and he'd be disappointed that uh, his horses have not run as, as well as they might. But he gets on with Alan Paulson pretty well. Alan Paulson on the right there, who when he did his round the world whiz in the jet, said that the re 
fueling stop in Dubai was the quickest anywhere and helped him set the record. to give Mr. Paulson and his trainer Bill Mott real credit because they they took the risk they came around the world they may not have minded whether they won or lost but they did have an awful lot to lose they um, did and traditionally John let's face it the, the great American champions have not been seen beyond their own shores as a rule and there, there's Bill Mott a real moment for him Alan Paulson on the right Aviation multi-millionaire. But Bill Knott, originally from South Dakota, now trains at Bill Belmont. A really genial, unflappable, patient and brilliant trainer who's handled this horse, let's face it. And since it hit the dirt, it's just hit the winning line first every time. Yeah. Incredible, unbeatable cigar does it again, this time halfway around the world. His 14th consecutive victory, that equals the legendary Man of War. Cigar by half a length over the gutty soul of the matter. The running time for the mile and a quarter, 203 and 8400 seconds on the sand track at Nat Al Sheba. In the national U.S. pool, Cigar going off at 1 to 5, return 260, 240 and 210. Soul of the matter, 460 and 3. And it was Le Carrier at 380, the exacta 1580. After the race, we talked to a rather relieved Alan and Madeline Paulson. I think it truly shows who is the champ of the world. And the horse did a fabulous job. And when you win 14 in a row, you got to be a champ. You got to have heart. Madeline, I know the emotions you go through. What were you feeling as he came down the stretch here at Nod Al Sheba, battling, of course, with Soul of the Matter? Oh, I was going, please, God, bring him home. <laughs> he was wonderful. I'm very proud of him. And Billy Mott told us how he did it. Well, I felt he was going to have to dig down and show us something that he's never had to do before. His other wins have been easy. He's uh, been able to shake his co competition off, turning for home, look at, which it looked like uh, he did today. However, when he turns for home, he's used to going down a quarter-mile stretch. Today, he went down a, a three furlong stretch and, and you know, uh, that horse ran to him and, and he had to show enough to hold him off till the finish post. And here's the way his rider, Jerry Bailey, saw it. I was a bit worried when Solo, I didn't know it was Solo the Matter, but when the other horse who turned out to be him came ranging up outside me, looked me in the eye, looked Cigar in the eye, Cigar wouldn't have it. He inched out again and I believe if they went around one more time, he wasn't gonna get by him. Well, tonight certainly was a coronation. Cigar is no longer just America's horse. He is now the horse of the world. 